Jimmy, we're here with uh, three fixtures from the Martin Rush family. We've got a Profile, a Wash, and a Beam. It's uh, Martin's club series. They're kind of going into the lower end of the of the market. Yeah, the clubs and pubs and DJs market. And what we've got here are the the MH series of mm. fixtures from within the Rush range. Mm. Uh, starting with the MH1 Profile. This fixture has an LED source in it. Mm -hmm. It has dual color wheels, dual gobo wheels, one of which can be uh, rotating, indexing. Uh, it's got a prism. Um, then we move on to the MH2 wash, which is an RGBW source. No zoom, no beam angle adjustments. Mm -hmm. Very simple, very straightforward. It does you know, basically color that moves. Yep. But any color. Yep. Third up, we have the MH3 beam fixture, and that uses a Philips Platinum 5R discharge lamp. And now it's the only one that's not an LED source. Mm -hmm. So it generates a little bit more heat, a little bit more power consumption, uh, but it gives you huge output. Now this one, slightly different optical path. You've got a single color wheel, single gobo wheel, and they're all static gobos, but you do have a multifacet prism and a frost filter as well. Um, you've got z uh, focus on both of these as well. So you can obviously get your nice clean beam effects and so on. This guy's got a prism. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's quite a good range of features mm. covered across the three units. Okay, so going down the market a little bit and trying to reduce the price point, what are they leaving out? What are they compromising on? Okay, the, the first thing I noticed before I turned them on is there's no art net. Right. So there's no ethernet ports on any of these units. They're mm -hmm. all three or five pin DMX. Yep. But you know, you've got loop throughs on the LED fixtures, mm -hmm. uh, not on the beam unit. You've got uh, a higher noise floor as well, which uh, I'm sure you can probably hear. Yeah. Um, given where these are going to land, I I've never been into a nightclub where I could hear myself think, let alone the sound of the moving lights thinking. Yeah. So no. I really think that's not an issue. Not at all. Um, you could even put these on a stage, and in fact, in some ways, I think the MH3 is actually probably a bit big for a lot of venues. Mm. Uh, and I think that a lot of places, unless you really want like smack you in the face kind of impact from your beam lights, mm. it's more than small venues will need. But the good news is there's an MH4 compact beam unit on the way and that's got a smaller lamp. So right. I think for the small users, maybe hold out until that appears and have a look at it. But um, look, th this would actually go quite well on a, a large stage. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think this is, this is a very good value beam fixture. Yeah, I mean, just standing right. here, this is, this is outshining. I mean, you can see that the output is so much higher than yeah. the other two fixtures. So. Mm. Yeah. Um, look, variable beam angles uh, on this guy and this guy, uh, as I said, fixed on this one. So look, there, there's a couple of things there that, you know, you don't have a zoom on the wash, for instance. Mm. Um, all of the units have only one DMX control protocol. So, mm. you know, if it's 19 channels to operate the fixture, it's only ever going to be 19 channels. Right. There's no extended mode. There's no like ultra fine resolution. But again, for the market they're shooting these things into, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't. All right. So, going to be seeing these guys in the club? Yeah. Look, I, I, I think this is this is uh, an appropriately built and appropriately priced range of fixtures, um, and and they all do the job. Okay.